My name is James Quitkiller, the Fighting Cowboy, and you're watching my manager and the host of the Bad Brad Berkwick Show. Forget about it. Hi, this is Ray Bumbo Mancini, and you're listening in to the Bad Brad Berkwick Show. Now, Brad's told me he's won many accolades for this interview show. I haven't seen any. And he's told me he's world-renowned for his interview uh, style, his charming personality. I doubt that. And he told me he can get anybody to anybody on his show because everybody wants to do it. I don't. So Brad, at this point, this is where you want me to say your stupid line, right? But I'm not going to say it. I keep telling you, I'm not going to say it. So until then, Listening to the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. And Brad, do the right thing. Just do the right thing. I'm John Ruiz, two-time WBA heavyweight champion of the world. And you're watching my man, Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Forget about it. This is Alfonso Ratliff. You're watching the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Forget about it. This is David Diaz, 1996 U.S. Olympian former WBC lightweight champion of the world, and you're listening to the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Forget about it. Ladies and gentlemen, you know him as the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. You know him for his catchphrase, forget about it. You know him as the author of the world-renowned book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime. You know his snazz, you know his jazz, you know him for all that pizzazz. When it comes to boxing commentary, he does the most. Without further ado, here's your host of the Bad Brad Berkwit Show. Bad Brad Berkwit. How'd all these people get in my room? Forget about it. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of the Bad Brad Berkwit Show, Forget About It. Now before I bring on my guests, a couple programming notes. Uh, yesterday we had on um, retired professional boxer Joey Ruiz, who I'm getting a lot of feedback on. He really enjoyed the show. Joey is now the Bad Brad Berkwood Show champion. He knocked Bobby Hits off. Bobby was at about an hour and eight. Joey's got it about an hour and 30 minutes almost. So he is now the champion. Now we're going to see who comes on and who has more stories than him uh, and takes him off the, uh, the championship right there. Also, Mike Landini's show was uh, Wednesday, he came on, the choir boy. Thursday was Gabriel Mota, don't forget he's fighting uh, this coming Friday at the uh, Horseshoe Casino in, in Hammond, Indiana. Jack the Kid Callahan is training him, uh, working his corner in the cage. Also, what we're going to do on this show, and, and also make sure you subscribe, hit the button and subscribe, leave your comments below. Remember, as I always say, to get respect, you must show respect. So if you try to come on the video and you try to clown me or you don't watch it and you tell me things, that are already in the video that uh, I know because I don't know why people want to do that. They, they don't want to read the post or uh, watch the video and then they start giving me things that are already in there. Make sure you watch it then we can have a conversation. As well, yeah, if you would zoom in on that, we're going to do a giveaway. The book is The Ron Lyle Story Off the Ropes written by the late Candace Toff. I reviewed it earlier this year on my show. Fantastic book. Ron Lyle was a great guy that I interviewed for my book. Boxing Interviews of Lifetime back in, I think, 2000, uh, 2000, 2001. God rest his soul. Tough, tough guy. In one of the greatest fights of all time, heavyweight between him and George Foreman. Uh, they knocked each other down. What a great fight, 1976. So when we hit, we're at 1,300 and I think 60 or 61 subscribers today. When we hit 1,500 subscribers, I'm going to give away this great book. Disclaimer, once again, Santino's outside and he is barking because he's union. And at the end of the show, he said, if I don't give him enough treats, which actually you're going to go after Debbie, because I'm retired, forget about it. I got insurance to cover all of this. He's, they're going after Debbie. The dog union, ASPCA, uh, Humane Society, and all of the above. Even though he's got two bowls of water out there, a towel on the ground, he's got better living conditions than I do. All right? Anyways, on that note, you wanted me to get this gentleman on. We got his brother on uh, a couple weeks ago. And now we have the other half of... Jack Bonson. No, I know. Eric, appreciate you coming on. I was 
Something funny came in my mind, I didn't want to say it, because my camera. Welcome to the show. Greatly appreciate you coming on. Like I said, it's, it's going to be fun. I'm not even going to mess with you like Marty was telling me some things. I'm not going to go there. Okay? Only time I'm going to do that is if Marty was sitting there because I like get back. Okay. So I want him to sit across from us right. so you can climb right back. Yeah, but something he said popped in my head was just funny. Again, like I said off camera, the show is all about you. No right or wrong answers. Talk a little bit about boxing, a little bit about life. Going through commercial break and by the fun okay. questions. Okay? Want to read a quote I got about you? Eric was a very tough and skilled fighter. Jack the Kid Callahan. Just out of curiosity, I know everybody's from this area. How right. far are you and Jack go back? Oh, uh, probably as far as I can remember. Uh, probably I went to the gym when I was nine years old and he was there. Um, so, nine. Uh, since you were young? Yeah, since I was young. And I always kid around. Out of all of us, and I'm working out twice a day, and I still can't compete with Jack. He's in his 60s. And he's like, hit my stomach's tail and break my hand. He's like in the best shape of everybody. Yeah. I mean, he's like, yeah. it's like a, we need to put him in these uh, uh, Iron Man things and bet on him because right. you know he's going to win. Yep. All right, let's start at the beginning. Where did you grow up? Uh, Whiting, Indiana. Okay. Uh, went to the boxing gym, followed my brother's footsteps. Um, he went there when he was 10. So. <clears throat> amateur boxing then you started when you were you could fight when you were 10 years old um, so I started going to the gym when I was nine um, you know Mar Marty was, Marty started when he was 10 mm -hmm. uh, probably had you know 50 or 60 amateur fights okay um, white and boxing club uh, they had two locations one the first one was on Atchison Avenue and then 119th Street okay and uh, Dennis Hardesty trained me all amateurs and mm, most of partial, partial. partial of my professional career. Okay. I am going to give you an opportunity since Marty said all of these couple of things. What do you have over Marty? Uh, Besides for uh, Mucho <laughs> Dinero, which we know is. Uh, it's not, not as, uh, not as much as he's not, not, as much not, as not, as not boxing plays. skills. He's, he's got the boxing skills. Okay. But get, come on, you got to get him on camera. Uh, what do you got better than him? Uh, boxing wise? No, period. Because oh, I mean, you know he said uh, he's funnier, he's better looking. He said, but you got more money than he uh, does. I'm better, said, better looking. Come you're better looking? Yeah. Okay. All right. But I can still hit him with, I know what combination I can still hit him with. Well, he, he said you had a pesky jab. He was hard to hit. He was, he, obviously. Right. I mean, uh, you know, he was great defense, but I know we sparred, like, for the first time in, like, probably 10 years, like, three months ago. Okay. I, I know every, I know the combination I can get him with every time. Okay. Now, you saw, did you see his show? Yes. Okay, so you saw that he said you had a couple to drink that night. He said, I'll fight him. Yep. He said, how much? $800 or whatever it was that you fought. We know how that went. Yeah. But if you had to get a rematch today, you think <laughs> you'd do better with him? You think? Because I'll train him. Uh, I don't know. No? I don't know. Nah, five, yeah. six rounds. Five, six rounds? He gets you so, in five, six rounds or you get him? I'd go the distance. You I, go the distance I, this time? Time. I wouldn't play, be playing uh, blackjack the night before. Okay. Like, Deb, I think uh, we got, I'm going to go. Even though I said I'd never be a promoter, I think there's some money here. Well, you think, will BP come out? Maybe. Maybe? Okay. So, a funny story about that. Uh, okay. About, uh, you know, I, I, I went down to, I think it was North Dakota, to watch him fight. His opponent didn't show up. And I said, hey, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll fight him or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, later in my career, that happened again. Not, not against Marty. Okay. So, I went to Germany to watch him fight for the W, I think it was WBO title okay. against Gregorian. Okay, yeah. I told you about so, it. I went, I flew down there. You know, he, he went a week early. I, they paid me to go down there, you know, to be part of his team three or four days before. So I'm in, um, I think it was Munich, Germany. Uh, so, you know, I'm in, I'm 20 years old, 20 something years old in Germany. You know, I'm, li I'm living it up. I came, you know, went there. Um, so way, way in, and we're going to hit Marty's way in. Um, I overhear somebody say, hey, uh, what's the name? Fight got canceled. Uh, I think his name was Michael Lowe. Okay. He goes, uh, his opponent didn't show up or whatever. I said, well, what's he weigh? And he said, oh, 147. I said, I'll fight him. Didn't ask his record, didn't ask who it was. Got it didn't, and when, it went, you know, night, two nights before, I'm in, I'm trying out the German beer. Wow. You know? <laughs> like, you know Did you win this fight? You no, I, I went, uh, I mean, I had 24 hours notice. I wasn't right. training. Okay. Uh, you know, what I did you want to do? I think I went five rounds. Okay. Did you get a better paycheck? Oh, a lot better. Hey, I went there with a couple hundred, left with a couple thousand. Never mind that. Never mind that. What name 
It's not even just popped in my head. You remember the name you fought under? Because I know they didn't yeah. say when you fought Martin. Yeah, what was the name? Dickie Martin. Dickie Martin. Dickie Martin. Dickie Martin. It sounds like something from the Little Rats. And I didn't even know. I didn't even. I, I don't know how it all came about. I just thought I was going there. I mean, I was going there to watch. Okay. And then I ended up fighting. And then they announced me as that. I was like, okay, whatever. You know, back in the day, I guess that was kind of a common thing. Oh, it was very common. Yeah, you know, I, I, didn't know, you know, I, was, I was 19 years old. Right. So I didn't really know. Okay. You know. Hey, Derek, if you would, let's zoom in on these pictures. He bought some great pictures with them. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. We, we left or right right now? To look, okay. Talk about this picture here. Uh, I think that was uh, early in my career, uh, probably Hammond Civic Center, uh, probably against the local fighter. Uh, I think it was David Pearson. Um, I think that was my first six round fight. Okay. And, and we know it with the great Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. over here. Yeah, that's uh. Is this, is, is this Mario? Yeah. That is Mario, okay. That's uh. Me, Chavez, my brother, and uh. My brother's trainer, Mike Surreal. Okay. The second, a lot of people don't know Marty fought Chavez twice, twice. actually. Uh, that was when he fought him the second time, I think it was 99 in, uh, in Mexico. Okay. And uh, that was obviously after the fight. Uh, that's pretty good. That you was, um, guys yeah, we, we that. went, actually, uh, I think we were. Trying to hunt down some money. <laughs> that was that was, that. that was over to Marty. Yeah, imagine that. Well, you heard the story Marty told about when he went to Don King's dressing room. Yep. And that dressing yeah. room, my hotel room, yeah. he said ten thousand more. He said I should ask for twenty. Yep. I'm surprised Don King gave it to him to have him thrown off the uh, the balcony. Yeah. That took guts. That's a that's a when actually they fought in Mexico. Um, funny story about that. You know, uh, it was in a bullfighting ring. Okay. Um, I think it was. Mexico, Mexico. Okay. Um, but Mexican fans did not like Don King. Really? So when he walked in, boot man, booze like. Really? Cups. I bet he didn't care. Cups getting thrown at him, and guess what? Those cups were filled with. I have no idea. Um, oh, urine. Urine. Yeah, I had a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Daddy would mind, but I've seen Don King boo. He could kill. Yeah. Oh, right. as long as he get paid, he could yeah. kill. He's like he's, a, he's oblivious. He yeah. just booed everybody. But it was. It was. It was Great experience. Cool. Okay. Obviously, you followed your brother for your am going into the amateurs. You followed him. Uh, talk a little bit about your amateur career. Did you, how long did you? Uh, um, I had probably, like I said, fifty or sixty amateur fights. Uh, started when right ten. I probably fought. I turned ten in February. I probably fought. Most of my amateur fights were probably between ten and fifteen years old. Okay. Ten and fifteen. Um, I went to you know state, regional. Went to a couple national. Uh, competitions, never won nationals, but any you know, big so. names in your amateur career? Oh, you I fought, fought um, yeah, um, I fought uh, Bones Adams. Oh, yeah, for, uh, Bones numerous Adams. times. Okay, numerous, uh, we're we're still friends. Uh, we talk on Facebook, but he, I, I want to say we fought three or four times, uh, and he got me every time. Okay, he went on to be bantamweight champion. Of right, Trump, yeah, you know, so. Is he in Vegas? Yeah, yeah. He has his own gym in Vegas. Okay. Um, actually, I fought him at the in Hammond one time. Really? Yep. He beat me in my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bones. Yeah. I can't remember Bones. Did he fight Paulie Allen? Yep. Okay. Twice. Twice. Mm -hmm. Did he win one of them? He lost both of them. Uh, well, the first one was very controversial. So okay. Every match. Um. But I think Paulie won a second one. Times, yeah. Okay. You and your brother Marty. You do have something over Marty. You fought. I can't pronounce his name right. But Khalid. Rahul. You fought him too. Yes. You went the distance. Yes. Marty didn't go the distance. No, I got So you do have something over Marty. <laughs> yeah. So he and research has find out about that. You, you dropped the decision. Marty got stopped. Right. I fought him in France. Talk and, right. Talk about that fight. Um. That was. You know what? That was. I never really took boxing really serious until that fight. Okay. My professional career because. A year, uh, probably a year after that fight, he went on to win the world title. Sure did. And I was like, I couldn't believe he won the world title. I went six rounds with him, kind of easy. And uh, then I said, who did he fight? Um, you know, I can't remember Marty I talked about. I can't oh, remember. Oh, man, who did he fight? The guy that beat Chavez. Frankie Randall. Oh, I sure. Beat, I think he beat Frankie. I think okay. he beat Frankie sure. Randall. Okay. And after I seen, seen him win the world title, I was like, man, I better, I can make some money doing this, you know? The two so, Yeah. And then... I mean, I, I took it kind of serious before that, but that that really Change. turned my turned my perspective. Okay. Looking at your fight ledger, a couple of names that jumped out at me and we'll kind of get your recollections of the fights. You fought the, the friendly 
Mayweather. Actually, the, about the only one that I like are the Mayweather. <laughs> Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> like Jeff. Yeah, I fought uh, Jeff. Um, I don't know what year it was. But, yeah, no, I don't have the year. Uh, I fought him in Grand Rapids. That, that was their hometown before they moved to Vegas. Yes. So all three of the Mayweathers were on that card. Really? Roger, and, and actually it was Jeff's last fight. Okay. So Roger, Jeff, and it was Floyd's like probably third or fourth professional yeah, fight. Right. Okay. So it was then, uh, yeah, I lost the eight round decision. Good boxer, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. great guy too. Friendly, um, you know, we're friends on Facebook. Yep. But uh, yeah, you know, lost, lost eight round decision. Uh, you know, I, I was in shape for that one. Okay. Thunder got him. Yeah. Uh, what about that fight? You know, that's, everyone always brings that up. That was probably my uh, biggest disappointment in my career. Um, you know, I took it on two weeks notice. Okay. The money was there. Um, you know, that, that's the only one that's on YouTube, which kind of... Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. which, you know, everyone all looks at that. And right. some people that don't know boxing, oh, was that your only fight? No, yeah. that wasn't my only no, fight. No, of course not. They should, yeah. they should but, uh, the only fight. But, you know, I, I was beat before that. If I, if I was, I, I couldn't have beat him. Even if I was in shape, okay. but I could have went five, six rounds. Okay. You know, but that was that was probably my biggest disappointment because, like I said, two weeks notice. All right. Where did you guys uh, fight? Madison Square Garden. Oh, Madison. What uh, yeah. were you main event or? Uh, uh, we were on the undercard of um, Grant. Michael Grant. Yeah, uh, against uh, Lance Lewis. Oh, he destroyed him. Yeah. Oh, two weeks yeah. yeah. Got him destroyed. Yeah. Okay, uh, Hector Camacho Jr. Yep. Um, that was another short, short notice fight. Um, you know, I always say that was, if, I think that was the toughest guy I fought. Hector, really? Okay. If he would, if he would have took it, I don't think he took boxing serious after he lost to Leha. Right. But, uh, fight. Yeah. He, was, he was strong. Okay. And he, he came in overweight. Um, I think the fight was at 140, 147. Okay. But it, he, he fought Leha at 135. Mm -hmm. Or 130. Yeah, it'd be great. Right. And, yeah, but. As if he he was strong. Okay. I mean he was, and then uh, before that fight in my dressing room, one one of my not I wouldn't say idols growing up, but was uh, Harold Warren. Oh, I he, 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 he trained. He trained. Well, I think it was as last. He fight. trained in Indianapolis a okay. lot, so I would see him. Right. And um, you know, in the locker room before they're showing what Chavez did, what um, Camacho did to him. Mm -hmm. One round, not I mean knocked out cold, and I'm like, man, he did that to Harold. <laughs> You know, but, 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 but in fairness to Harold, that was later in his later, career. Right. Harold fought a long time. Right, right. I was at one of Harold's fights when he fought. I can't remember before. Uh, and it might have been his last fight. Yeah, but I mean, he, got, he got caught cool. Yeah. I mean, first round, right. I, mean, I was like, man, he did that to Harold Warren? You know, I'm like, oh, <laughs> man, what am I getting myself into? But okay. no, he was, he was real strong, a nice guy. Okay. Um, his dad was in the locker room with us uh, okay. before. You know, they were real nice guy. They were, both of them were real nice. Okay. You know, and. If, if he would, I know he's still kind of trying to fight, but if he would have took it serious, yeah, I think he, he would have been, I think he, he was always kind of, I don't think he trained like he should have. No, I, don't, I agree with you on that. We're going to flip. And that was on, that was on uh, Fox Sports too, so. Okay. Funny, funny story. Go ahead, funny go ahead, story go ahead. about that. My, so, uh, my uh, girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife, she was uh, watching it, and uh, so it must have been on delay, because she's at home watching it. And, and that was in, that fight was in Indiana, Southern Indiana. Okay. And uh, so she's watching it. I called her after the fight. She's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, I'm "Calling you. Fight's over." She's like, "No, it's not. I'm watching. I'm watching you walk up the <laughs> ring right now." I'm like, "Oh, okay. Well, uh, I won't tell you what happened, but uh, okay, enjoy it." <laughs> but that was uh, he caught me. He caught me. Man, I don't know if it was fourth or fifth round, but uh, I had I, not too many people get cut, but I got about. Well, 10 stitches right under the chin. Wow. Right from that fight. Um, you know, I mean, I went down with one shot and then I, you know, I, I ended the fight on my feet, but he, he was, he was, he was, tough. Know, okay. Yeah, tough guy. We'll flip it. First, one thing you miss from boxing? Um, probably, I'd say probably the people. Okay. People are traveling. I like, I like to and, travel. And then flip it. What is one thing you're like, I'm so glad I have to deal with this. Uh, just, Kind of, I would say the anxiety before, okay, before a fight, you know, in that locker room, I don't miss that. The butterflies. Yeah, butterflies. Yeah. People don't understand that. Yeah, you know, I don't care who you are, you go through right. mostly everybody I ever know, at least if they're being honest. Right. I don't care if the amateur pro they're there. Right. It's the it's the what ifs, the what ifs, and yeah. we did this. Okay. Right, right, right before, right yep. before the fight. But once you get in there, even yep. the, even with the Gandhi fight, I was, 
um, and anxiety. Two, three days before, you know, I'm in a hotel room in New York, just by myself. Man, anxiety was unbelievable. Okay. And then even the, you know, those, those two fights before I fought him was Joey, it was Joey Gamash that was and Wilson. That fight, yeah. Both of those guys were taken out on stretchers. Right. Well, yeah. but they did Gamash wrong. He came in right. really, really heavy in that right. fight. But I mean, everyone thought, you know, oh god, this guy is amazing. You know, he hit so hard. Even I had a lady doctor that was giving me the physical. She's like, oh son, you know, just you're the older lady. Oh son, you know, just you know, just go out there and just do your best. You know, don't get hurt. <laughs> I'm like, what am I, you know? And then I, you know, anxiety you, for it. And then you right pull, when, you pull the Marty and go upstairs and say, I want thirty thousand dollars more. <laughs> and then right, you know, then right before, right when you get in the ring, it goes gone. gone. Even yeah. I mean, yeah, right when you get in the ring, not even before the bell, but when the bell rings, then you're even more relaxed. But well, that's like you know, as you tell people, they say, you know, if you got bruises on your arm, you got rope burns from the, you know, from the ropes, the marks there. They say, did you feel that? Oh, I said, no. No. They said, you didn't feel that? I said, they said, that guy hit you. I said, I know him, man. I was in the ring. But no, I didn't because no. your adrenaline. Once, yeah. the, once the bell rings, either you throw that first punch or if he yeah. hits you with the first punch, your adrenaline is so pumped up. Yeah. They say me, but you didn't. I said, no, I didn't feel that. I feel it now. Right. But in the ring, no, they, they, right. they can't understand how your adrenaline is. I mean, it's, at, it's way, way up there. If you had the power to change one thing in box, first of all, do you still follow boxing? Uh. I watch the big, if I have an interest in it. Okay. If, if it's a big fight or if it's someone I know or someone I know training. You watch it. You know, I watch it. Uh, I don't watch, you know, ESPN fights. Power, you know. yeah. The power to change one thing in boxing. What would you change? Um, I'd probably have, try to have the best fight the best. Hey, who does that sound like? I say it all the time. You know, people get mad. I'm not a huge MMA fan. They're not going right. to I'm just, it's, it's too violent for me. If it's like, it's violent with the knees and it just right. to me it's just it's not it's not a, a, boxing to me is a science it's mma is very very brutal I respect the guys that get in the ring i think they it has just like boxers it takes a lot of guts to get in there but people complain about why in my opinion why is mma taking so much from boxing i said because they'll match the best versus yeah. the best you know you don't see the days of very seldom sugar ray right. and tommy Eight, fighting when right. they were the best yep. okay uh Marvin had with Tommy Hearns. You know, today it's like uh, these fighters are so protective. One one loss on their ledger, it's like, oh, it's the end of their career. Yeah, it no, I mean, different you know promoters. If you're mm -hmm. with this promoter, or this promoter, exactly. that, you know, they got to do, do away with that. Yeah, I mean, let, they got to do it for for the fans. Absolutely, absolutely. What I like to do is look at the camera. How, how many years did you fight? Uh, Started when I was ten and probably till thirty. Okay, and as a pro? No. Oh uh, yeah, uh, about as a pro, uh, probably ten years. Ten years. Okay, you got somebody that's going to tell you uh, with ten years' experience. Listen to it, folks. Let the young man or woman know your words of wisdom for them just turning professional. Look at the camera. Okay. Um, I would say get yourself a good team. Get yourself a good trainer, good matchmaker, good manager, someone that cares. Um, about you, not as a, not only as a fighter but also as a person. Um, you know that's going to protect you. Get your four rounders in. Get your six rounders in. Get your eight rounders in. Get that experience, and uh, then you know always always be in shape. You never know when you're going to get that phone call. Okay. Look like you retired about 2002 from professional boxing. Yeah. Let's catch your viewers up on what you've been doing since um, boxing. Well, you know, it always throughout, even when I boxed, I always worked full time. So uh, just um, so after, you know, I always worked. I worked steel mill, worked a uh, BP refinery. So just kept working. Um, married kids. Okay. Um, baseball. Baseball. Uh, my kids are in the base. Yeah, yeah. My kids are. Uh, big you got two baseball. boys, right? Two boys. Yeah, yeah it's seven. Handsome as can be. Seven and eleven, uh, big into baseball. So uh, you know, I I did uh, I trained uh, my brother after boxing. I, I did a little training. Uh, promote I promoted a couple fights. Um, but I, once I had kids and they started getting older, you know, I kind of had to focus on them. Okay. So then I now I'm a travel baseball dad. <laughs> okay. But uh, you know, I still you know I still probably when they get older. I'll probably go back, you know, back in and maybe train, maybe open my own gym. Okay. And what's your boys' names? Uh, Drew and Ryan. Okay. Marty, uh, good uncle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because if he's not, we're gonna smack him. <laughs> right. 
Okay, good. He comes to the baseball games? Oh, he's got to come to more. He's got to come? Yeah. Marty, you on camera. Come to your nephew's baseball <laughs> games. Come on, Marty. You got time. Yeah. He did He did come to one game and my 11-year-old last year, and the, my son had the best game of his life. See? See? Yeah. Okay. All right. On that note, Marty, we called you out. I called you out. Even if Eric says he didn't, I called you out, Marty. <laughs> On that note, we're going to take a short it's commercial break. It's back at the Rosemont Rumble, Saturday, September 21st at the Dome in Rosemont. Join us for a sporting event unlike any other done the Hits Boxing Way, where celebrities, friends, and families come together for a night of professional boxing. This event's fight card includes Nick Ramirez, who's making his return to the Hits Boxing Ring. Danny Williams, who's 23-3 and record with 18 knockouts, enters our ring for the first time as well. It's speaking of first times. Oh, David Bozak makes his pro debut. Our main event of the evening features Tommy White Lightning Hughes, who's fighting for the WBC title, and he's going to have to go through the 25-3 Mike Ravonsky to get. Tickets for the Rosemont Rumble are now on sale at Eventbrite and the HitsBoxing.com website. Hits Boxing Rosemont Rumble is brought to you in part by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorneys, the MZI Group, El Nascimento Tequila, the Provost Group, and Bobby Hits' Gilios on State Street Tavern. Hits Boxing. It's better life. Hey folks, this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwood. And I got an exciting opportunity for people that would like to sponsor the Bad Brad Berkwood show or advertise with me. If you're interested, call the Ringside Report office at 703-517-2155. Or you can send me a business email to B B E R K. W-I-T-T, B. Berkwit, my last name, of course, at AOL.com. One more time, that phone number is 703-517-2155. Sponsors and advertisers, we're looking for you. All right? Forget about it. Hey, folks, this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwit. And what do Gene Fulmer, Aaron Pryor, James Whip Tillis, Davey Pearl, Joey Bishop, Al Martino, Jerry Bale, and Roy Jones Jr. all have in common. Well, they are some of the many interviews in my boxing book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime. Now, if you would like to pick up a copy of this book, go to AuthorHouse.com. Again, that's AuthorHouse.com. And if you would like it personally autographed, all you have to do is pay postage and handling to St. John, Indiana, back to your location, and I will sign it the way you would like it, or I can put a personal description that I think you would like in it. All right? Forget about it. Hey, folks, this is Bad Brad Berkwood, and I'm the personal manager for James Quick Tillis. Now, a short little bio on him. On October 3rd, 1981, he faced Mike Weaver for Mike's WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World and went 15 rounds, dropped a close decision to him. Fast forward to May 3rd, 1986, when James Quick Tillis took on a then young Mike Tyson, who was 19-0 with 19 knockouts. Quick took him the distance, and he was the first man to do that, and he laid the blueprint that Buster Douglas would take four years later and wind up beating Iron Mike Tyson. Now, with that said, if you would like to book James Quick Tillis for personal autograph signings, TV, movie events, personal appearances, you can reach out to me at the Ringside Report office at 703-517-2155. Again, that's 703-517-2155. Or you can send me a business email to B-B-E-R-K-W-I-T-T, -T, B-Berkwit at AOL.com. Again, I'm the personal manager for James Quick Tillis, also known as the Fighting Cowboy. Forget about it. All right, folks, we're now back. And remember, we're going to do a giveaway of the book, Ron Lyle Off the Ropes, written by the late Candace Toff. When we hit 1,500 subscribers, we're now back with retired professional boxer Eric Jakubowski. Here's what we have to do. Uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to ask you some of the fun questions now. Did you prepare for this? Yeah, everybody, a little bit, a little bit. I know, that's all right. And you know something? A couple people were getting ahead of me. I said, I don't know if it's they're looking in the glass and it's hitting my, my questions, or I think people are actually watching this. I guess it's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, 
Marty, have fun with these. Let's have more fun. Okay. Favorite fighter of all time? Uh, probably Hagler. Okay. Out of curiosity, what's your favorite Hagler fight? Uh, gotta be a Hagler Hearns. Hearns. Yeah. Were you surprised? Uh, I mean, I was surprised that it was that great of a fight for right. nine, yeah. nine minutes. Three you know? rounds. Yeah. That's the best three rounds of boxing ever. Yeah. You remember when in the third, you know, I met right. Hagler in Italy when I was stationed there during the war. He still had that cut. Really? Because you know the bad cutting on the first yeah. round. When in the third round, when he hit, I know you remember, when he hit Hearns, and Hearns kind of his body was mm -hmm. like spaghetti. And he went, his eyes rolled up and his head, he was down, he going to count on you. He was done. Yeah. It was, that was, I saw that, that was the days of closed circuit, too. Right, and right. I saw that at uh, Radisson in Maryville. Closed circuit, yeah. Man, that was funny because everybody would be there, you know, arguing, yeah. and they got this side, that side. I like pay per view because it's in your house, but I, I missed the closed yeah, circuit. Yeah, that is. Remember the last one that they had? Who was the last one? Give me a hand. Let me see if I can. De La Hoya. De La Hoya versus. It wasn't Camacho, was it? Chavez. Was it really? Yeah. Okay. That, that was closed circuit. Um, that was like, they kind of redid it, you know. They fought you, twice, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think they did. I could be wrong. It, it was probably around 96, you think? Yeah. Around yeah. there? Yeah. So yeah. Chavez was gone by then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was gone by then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Favorite fight. I know you said Marvel, but favorite fight of all time. Even if it is, if it's Marvel, okay. that's fine. Um, I, I, I know everyone says Hagler Hearns. Uh, one fight that I was at live that uh, I don't think a lot of people give a lot, a lot of credit to was De La Hoya of Corte. Oh my God, that was a fantastic. Yes. I, mean, I don't think if he drops them in the last round, right. he might and not he, win that yeah, fight. Yeah, they both down in the sixth. Yeah. And, um, great fight. And great Hoya fight. Him, yep. when I was, a lot of people don't talk about that fight. Oh great, that's, that's a fight. fantastic fight. Pleasure. But there, when I was stationed in Virginia, I used to go to car wash and uh, Sid was Alexandria, Virginia. And a lot of guys at the car wash, uh, they detailed and they, they dried them off. Were from Ghana, and right. I always said to him, "Are you from Akura or Kumasi?" He said, "How do you know that?" And then I said, "You speak Tree." He said, "Yeah, you speak Tree." I said, "No, but I, when I was a recruiter, I put a lot of people in from Ghana." Really? And I always asked him, "Who did you love more, Azuma Nelson or Ike I Quartet?" Say, yep. You know who they said, right? If you Nelson, get, Nelson. yeah, they said right. he's, he, they, he's a legend, he's a right. king there. They didn't like Quartet. They it's great fighter. They said, but they said he was very arrogant. Oh, really? He was very flamboyant, very arrogant to the people. Where Azuma Nelson was. One of right. the people, he, you know, even though he became a bigger fighter than Ike was, but that was that was a great fight, and yeah. that's my knock on De La Hoya. I, I wish that great fighter deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I think he is in the Hall of Fame. But my one knock on him was he fought basically everybody, and he was in great fights. Right. Fernando Vargas was yeah. a great fight. Corte was a great fight, but he doesn't promote Canelo, and I'm saying Canelo because this is cash right. cow. Like he fought, if he, he fought, fought right. if he promoted like he fought. I would take up for Canelo, besides for the cheating with the, with the, the bull crap, he didn't know what was right. in the meat. But I wish that he promoted like he fought. Because right, yeah. he fought everybody. That was a great That's funny that you bring that up because everyone ever, I've, I run into people from Ghana, that's the first thing I say too. Oh, you know, I, you know, I quirked yeah, it. Yeah. You, know, I, you like boxing? Because everyone, it yeah. seems like everyone got like yeah. boxing. So I'm like, oh, you got uh, uh, Corte or Azuma Nelson? Because, yeah, it's funny. Okay. Favorite boxing commentator? Oh. Can I switch it up and give a shout out to my friend? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, ring announcer. Okay. Instead of commentators. Because there's only, I mean, how many commentators? Not I mean, that Sean many. Grady, Lampley, right. you know, but. Uh, Mercy. How about, uh, yeah, uh, Tom Triver, ring announcer. Okay. I grew up with them. Out of Texas. Yeah, but he's uh, he grew up in Hammond, Indiana. Yeah. I, I graduated high school with him. Okay. And we're, actually, my brother and I are the ones that got him started in ring announcing, and now he's top yeah. announcer for England. And he's blowing up, yeah. Yeah, for uh, Frank Warren Promotions. Yeah. Um, so, ring announcer, he's right up there with. Uh, Michael Buffer. Michael Buffer, right. Okay. You know. What's his catch, what's Thomas's catchphrase? Does he have one? Uh, I'm not sure if he has one or not. Don't say Michael's because he'll sue me. <laughs> you know what it is. You, yeah, if yeah. you say it, you get yeah. sued. No, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not Bruce, sure if he Bruce does Bruce would be the one that contacted me, Bruce Buffer. Do you have a favorite football team? Oh, uh, well, Bear, uh, Bears. I know my brother said the Steelers. I like the Steelers too, but I don't want to copy him. So okay, uh, Steelers and Bears, Bears. 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 You need to do anything? Everybody says the Bears. The way 85. But Joey said it yesterday. You guys are gonna do something this year? Hopefully. Okay. It didn't start out good, but. Who are you playing today? Yeah. Broncos. Bro Ooh, tough yeah. game. Tough game. Okay. Do you have a favorite basketball team? Uh, I don't really follow basketball after Michael Jordan left, so. Okay. 90s Bulls. I don't either. 91, 92, 93 Bulls. Me too. Jordan was my guy. 96, 97, 98. Baseball. Uh, well, socks. Yes. Socks. Yes. socks only. What's your, what's your son's team? By the way, what's your son's team? Uh, he, 
Well, he plays travel for uh, Morris Baseball. Okay. And then, but he plays Dyer Little League, and they're all Sox, but just different. And how old did you say they were? Eleven and seven. Was that fifth grade here? Eleven. Yeah, sixth. And sixth grade. Sixth, and he's about to turn twelve. So okay. Sixth and second grade. All right. But yeah, White Sox all the way. All the way. Okay. Sox. Favorite types of movies. I like. Uh, oh man, I, I would say uh, I like real life true stories. Okay. Maybe like uh, dramas, believable, kind of like believable stories. Okay. What's your favorite movie of all time? Uh, so I got two of them. Okay. Stand by me. Great movie. And uh, Usual Suspects. I gotta tell you, everybody loves that movie. I couldn't get into it. Really? I, the whole Kaiser is so uh, safe. Yeah, man. I'll tell you, I I could. I, I, maybe I need to watch it again. That's what I. That's what I. I, I watched watch it watch once, it. and I and I was like, I think I stopped watching like halfway through, right. and then I, then I watched it again. But every time you watch it, you you see something, you see something different. And they, I, I, I'll give you another chance. I know I'm in a minority because there's two movies that everybody loves and I don't. It's Pulp Fiction. Everybody loves Pulp Fiction. Yeah. I don't know if you do, but most people, a lot of people do. And Usual Suspects. Really? But I do like the end. I see the yeah, space he's walking think... down the street and his foot yeah. straightens yeah. out. Yeah. And you're like, oh, snap. I didn't, even know, I didn't know that many people knew about that. You know about Usual Suspects. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think he won on a, on a word. I think uh, Spacey won. Yeah, yeah, Kevin Spacey. I like Gabriel Byrne in it, too. Yeah. He's good in that. Okay. Favorite musical band? Um, I would say... For sports, for sports, gotta be Queen or ACDC. Okay. For you know, now you saw getting, Marty, getting hyped up. Okay, and you saw Marty's show. Marty gave me and they have a whole yeah he, off camera thirty minutes about. The, and actually, I listened to something I liked it. The reggae, right, but he stopped. talked. He talked yeah. about the whole the skinhead thing. Right. And now that the reggae music, did he? Did you listen to any of them? No, not, not, really, not really. So no. did you kick Marty out? Did Marty's? Did he have like aluminum foil up on the windows and the room was black <laughs> and all that? <laughs> You and your mom kicked him out. You gotta go. You gotta go. But he was showing me the music. He's actually, I've, I've watched a couple of videos on um, YouTube. Actually, it's basically reggae. Right. right but he explained right, the whole right. the whole group. Yeah. It was interesting. I was like learning something new. Right. Because I, I, you saw it. I gave him homework. Uh, Bobby Hitt's thing was Damon Wayne. He said I didn't know who that was. But he hit me up and he said I know everything about him now. I went to Wikipedia and I read everything on <laughs> Damon Wayne. Because he said it was a Damon Wayne character. Favorite concert you've ever seen. Oh, all right. This not the concert, but kind of like the whole story behind this concert was that I was I was a big Public Enemy fan Love in, the, in yeah. the 90s, okay, or 80, 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. So in Chicago, there was there was actually a it was when uh, Desert Storm was first starting. Okay, 91. And yep, um, so it must have been 91, yeah, 92. I was in, I was in, there was um protesters out outside of the Public Enemy concert. Really? And uh, the police and. Uh, protesters kind of rioted, and we were we were coming out of the concert, and uh, you know there's Chuck Chuck D was on the balcony okay. watching the riot down there. There's all newspaper articles about it. I was like in the middle of it. I'm like, oh my, you know. Let's did, they have, did they have you on any of the covers? No, 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 no. But it was just that was like most memorable. Okay. Like, you know, I, I look back. I think the Tribune did a story like 25 years later of that <gasps> of that uh, did, concert. Did, did you ever see the reality show? I didn't couldn't stand it. But when he was with Bridget no, Nielsen. No. Flavor Flav? No, I never yeah, saw it. He was like this tall. Bridget Nielsen, you know, she's married to Stallone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This tall. They both, uh, yeah, it was interesting to say the least. Yeah. Favorite male singer? Oh, Kid Rock. Really? I love Kid Rock. Okay. <laughs> Favorite uh, female singer? Ooh. Uh, Shania Twain. Okay. I, I like all types of music, so, you know, country, right. you know. This question, I'm going to change it around, starting with you. Because I know it's a tough one, favorite song. So instead of favorite song, you, you have a CD player in a car and everybody has a CD yeah. player. But do you use a CD player or do you have to listen to the wife and the kids no, when you drive? I, I, CD. Okay. Or, or when the kids are in there. What, what are you playing right now on your CD player listening to? Probably, probably Kid Rock. Kid Rock. <laughs> Kid Rock, yeah. What's the... Roll, uh, so I got a favorite song. Okay. Uh, Roll, Roll, okay. Roll On by Kid Rock. Which is a cover of Bob Seger's song. Uh, no, no, that's uh. Oh, no, that's turn the, yeah. turn the page. Yeah, turn the page. Kid Rock did a cover of Turn the Page. Okay. So yeah, Roll On by Kid Rock. Okay. Yeah. That's not the one where they have the sample of Leonard Skinner in there. No, no. Which one is that? When he's on the boat. Right. Uh. You know, summer. Like, summer something. But he's yeah. but he's got Leonard, right, so right. Leonard Skinner thing. This like the hook. I you pulled up in a caravan. So you got this. no. Uh, uh, I did I, 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 Okay. I the man question. Favorite car. No. My route. Big in the cars, but I'd have to go luxury, probably a uh, Mercedes. Okay. Which Mercedes? Oh, I don't know. 
uh, I don't even just. You yeah, have all the money that everybody yeah, has. You can afford to buy three of them. I, I go, uh, uh, I go luxury Mercedes or sport, sports, sports Mercedes. Okay. Both, if I could afford both of them. Well, yeah. we know you can afford them. No. Mario put you out there. <laughs> he said comedian money, so we know you can afford them. Favorite noise or sound you like to hear? Um, I'd say my kids laughing. Okay. Flip it. Least favorite noise or sound? Hmm. Uh, screeching tires. Okay, I hate that one too. It's like, you know, yeah. accident, accidents about to happen. So, yeah, it's like nails on <laughs> chalkboard to me. And I'll tell you what, around here, I hear it all the time because I, I'm not calling you out, but Indiana drivers forget about it. <laughs> I mean, I thought I was back in New York, but at least in New York, you got a thousand cars on right. two lanes. These drivers out here, you should hear some of the things she says driving home. Oh my <laughs> God, she just kind of picked up some of the things I've said. Favorite food? Uh, chicken. What type Anything of chicken? With chicken? Chicken, barbecue chicken, chicken tacos, chicken on my pizza. Chicken on your pizza? Yeah. Don't, I don't know how far this interview, chicken this interview may go right now. <laughs> this interview may stop right now, folks. Please tell me you don't put pineapple on your pizza. Oh, I do. Pineapple. Cut, cut. <laughs> He's out of here. Pineapple. Yep, that's my favorite. You got no Italian in you at all. <laughs> you just set my people back a million years. Pineapple. Oh, my God. All right, I'm, it's, it's not a question, but Marty texted me the other day and said, hey, I want to take you to, and I said to Deb, and she thought he was being funny. Go tacos? No, 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 pizza. Because we talked pizza, yeah. I think his favorite food was pizza or something. Oh, Dino's. Dino's. Yeah. And she was, Deb was trying to be funny, said, he's going to take you to Domino's. I said, no, it wasn't a Miss Pretty. He said Dino's. He's like, oh, I thought he meant Domino's. Because I had a guest on in, in Tulsa, and I said, where's good pizza? And he said, pizza hut. I said, oh, my God, pizza hut, really? <laughs> he's like, yeah, the buffet. I'm like, all right, yeah. whatever, forget about it. How good is Dino's? It's good. Is this thin, 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 thin. Crust. And that's in. Is that in white? Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll have to check it out. If you hit the lottery tomorrow, first of all, would you spend the money or would you save it? No. Mar Marty would spend it. I Marty and Marty would spend it. He said in the show he does. If you hit the lottery tomorrow, what would you do with the money? I'd retire first. Okay. Um, probably tra travel. All right. Travel, buy a winter home somewhere. More. Okay. Warm. Warm. Okay. He said that twice, so you don't have to put his name. I feel like that. Which goes into the last fun question. Either you've been or you like to go to favorite vacation destination. Um, we usually, um, every year or other year, go to uh, Mexico, Cancun, Puerto Vallarta. Okay. Uh, so anywhere warm, palm trees, and okay. beach. All right. All right. I respect that. What is one thing, Eric, you could share with the viewers? that people really don't know about you? Uh, I'd say, uh, you meet me now, no one no one believes that I was a fighter. Okay. Um, I don't Why, know because you're just like laid back? And, uh, laid back, my demeanor, maybe my looks. Right. I, don't, I don't know how a fighter's supposed to look, you know. Right. But uh, yeah, no, you know, everyone is surprised that I used, I, you know, once they find out that I used to box. Right. And I, don't, I, don't, I don't talk about it a lot. Okay. You know, they, people find out though. Right. You know, now Facebook and all that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, people are surprised I was a fighter. Um, quite about it. Uh, okay. All right. With everything we discussed, boxing, life, some fun questions. If you had to sum yourself up in a few thoughts as a human being, Eric, what would you say? Uh, I would just say, you know, I'm laid back. Uh, try to be friendly to everybody. Um, you know, hard, hard worker. Okay. And finally, what is the saying? You live your life by if you have one. Mm, work hard, play harder. Okay, good one. What I'd like you to do, this is your platform. I'd like you look at the camera, send out a message to your family, your friends, and all your supporters when you were boxing. Okay. Um, my family now, uh, Nicole, Drew, Ryan. Uh, love you guys so much. Uh, thank you, Nicole, for putting up with me. Uh, Drew and Ryan, uh, keep working hard, do good in school. Um, I know you guys love baseball, keep working hard at it, and you never know where life's going to take you. Um, fan, uh, fans, I don't know if I had that many fans well, as, you as, far, as, as no, many as Marty no, you did, do. but, uh, don't sell yourself short. but you thanks do. for supporting me. Uh, from the time I was 10 years old, uh, 
throughout my boxing career, uh, when I promoted, fans came out, you know, I promoted my brother for his last fight in Whiting. Um, thanks for coming out, supporting me. And uh, friends, you know, I, like I said, I like the movie Stand By Me. They say you never had uh, friends like you did when you were 12 years old. Um, and luckily, I, I still have, we still get together once a year, friends I grew up with at uh, Christmas time. Uh, I think that's a great time. Uh, thanks for supporting me also. Okay. Appreciate you coming on. And don't sell yourself short, you do have fans. <laughs> because people, if, I don't know if you know my buddy, uh, Johnny Cavanaugh, he's a, he does woodwork. I know you know okay. Kenny and God, and Kenny knows him. And uh, he built a custom piece for Deb in the uh, dining room part of the house. And he's a huge boxing guy. And when he saw, I think, yeah, we had the pictures up at that point, right? From around here? Yeah, he's, he lives in uh, Crown Point. Okay. Uh, he's a retired, uh, I think he did steal there. Or, you and the guy, he came in office, saw the boxing pictures. He stayed for two hours. Really? And he was telling me your name. He told me Marty. He told me about Gary Kirkland. He told me about um, Landini, yeah. Jack the Kid Callahan, all these guys. He's like, you got to, because we were talking, I said, yeah, I'll do a show. I'm, thinking about bringing him back because right. we did it in Tulsa and a lot of other people knew you were coming on that's why I said don't sell yourself short I know Marty had the bigger <laughs> career and all that well he had 100 plus fights too right. you know but still don't ever sell yourself right. short because you do have a lot of fans that run here and the two things I never pull punches if you didn't see on right. Facebook I don't pull it on Facebook I don't pull it in life the two things that I heard about you okay well three things about you have your community money you gotta do <laughs> which I respect that there's nothing better with saving is that you're a hard worker, I heard that, and that you're a hell of a nice guy, yeah. okay? And never sell yourself short, because a lot of people in this area respect you. And I know there's a rivalry between Chicago and Northwest Indiana yeah. with the boxing and blah, blah, blah. There's always gonna be rivalries. Right. But there's a lot of guys in Chicago that respect both you and your brother, right. okay? Because I hear your name in the same sentence, I talk to all these guys right. in the same sentence. So like I said, a lot of people wanted you to come on. So there you go, folks. That's what we do on the Bad Brad Berkeley Show. We get the people that you want to see on. We're going to be getting business people on as well. We're going to take next weekend off, uh, programming note again. We're going Saturday night to the Dome in Rosemont, Illinois to cover Bobby Hitz's card, uh, the Rumble. I forget the first part. Rosemont Rumble is the name of it. We'll be covering that Ring Side Report, which is my business side of it. We'll be doing uh, some videos. We'll do a full uh, post-fight wrap-up. So make sure you come out and uh, support Bobby's uh, card. You'll see on the commercial all the information on the show. And like I said, another great guest. We're going to keep getting them. Tune in, subscribe. Don't forget about the giveaway, 1,500 subscribers. All right, so that's another show in the can. Forget about it. And as Frank Sinatra saying so eloquently, so long ago, the best is yet to come. Bad.